Hey guys, so this is going to be a review of The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson. This is the first book in the Stormlight Archive series. Very long book, over a thousand pages. A very, very difficult book to review. And I've tried to review this once before. I filmed the review last weekend and it didn't work out. So I'm going to try again and see if it's any better. Basically there's just so much going on in this story that it's really hard to review it. I don't, uh, I, it's going to be difficult to summarize stuff. I'm going to try not to necessarily summarize stuff and though it seems like I'm going to be saying a lot of things, there's just so much going on in the story. There are a lot of different characters and a lot of different things happening that I need to kind of give you a sort of glimpse into each little thing. That's what I'm hoping to do with this review, is give you a sort of glimpse into every little aspect of what the book covers but not necessarily give you any of the actual story, any of the actual things that happen, because there's just so much that goes on. And so it'll seem like I'm talking a lot, it'll seem like I'm saying a lot, but at the same time, I'm not even remotely scratching the surface of what happens in the story and what is up with these characters and this world. Basically, my goal with this review is to hopefully get you interested in uh, what's going on enough to pick up the book because it is a long book. It probably pretty intimidating for most people to get into it, a thousand page long book that also has a, a sequel that's over a thousand pages and many more books left in the series that are probably going to be somewhere around a thousand pages and I know that's intimidating but what I really hope is to give you enough to get you into wanting to read this because I feel like there's a whole lot here that a lot of people would love and I kind of want to give you a glimpse into each little thing that makes this story what it is. Set on the extremely unique world of Roshar, a uh, place within Brandon Sanderson's epic fantasy universe, The Cosmere, along with several of his other books and series like the Mistborn series, Elantris, Warbreaker, and more series that haven't even been written or published yet. This is a story that follows many different characters living very different lives and through various different situations within this world. Roshar is a place unlike any other, split into several different countries with varying importance to the story. Brandon Sanderson really builds this world from the ground up for us. We learn of its unique uh, creatures, flora, weather, animals, political systems, religions, weapons, technology, well, magic system, etc. Roshar is plagued by these epic storms called high storms. Never get caught in one of these or you'll likely die from having your skin ripped right off your body from the winds or being hit by tons of debris. While some countries, such as a country called Shinovar, is protected by mountains from the high storms, many countries where the people are forced to hide away during the high storms and have kind of built their societies around the high storms. But whenever a high storm comes, it infuses many types of gemstones with this thing called stormlight. Stormlight infused gemstones have a very a variety of different uses, including money, decoration, and the use of gemstones, stormlight infused gemstones as decoration usually a sign of wealth and for a sort of magic system called Surge Binding, which we won't really get into right this moment because it's fairly complicated and you kind of have to learn about it as we go along. Stormlight just has many different uses within this world and is a big part of this world. There's also these creatures, for lack of a better word, called Spren, which show up for a variety of different reasons and have a variety of different forms or species, for lack of a better word. There's wind spren, spren you just kind of see floating on the wind, or flame spren, which you just see floating around fire. Then there's spren, such as anger spren, which show up whenever someone's angry, or fear spren, when uh, someone is afraid, then fear spren pop up. There are glory spren, honor spren, pain spren, river spren, etc. There are just many different kinds of spren, and there are many different mysteries surrounding the spren but many people just kind of accept them as a part of daily life. It's really just natural to see them floating around in the various forms that they appear in. After the assassination of the old king of a country called Alethkar, the Alethi, the people of Alethkar, go to war with those they believe that are responsible for it, the Parshendi. There's this sort of societal hierarchy within most countries between light eyes and dark eyes. The light eyes are above the dark eyes. Usually the light eyes rule the dark eyes. Though there are many different uh, rankings among light eyes and dark eyes. So like a low ranking light eyes could be not really that much more important than a high ranking dark eyes, although light eyes can always rank up higher than dark eyes. After the assassination of that old king of Alethkar, that kingdom's 10 
high princes were called on by the old king's son, the new king, King Elokar, to fight with those responsible, like I said, a race called Parshendi. And they fight on this desolate, dangerous place called the Shattered Plains, a place in which both the Alethi and Parshendi have created war camps. There are ten separate Alethi war camps, each with their own high prince, under the unification of King Elokar. We follow a dark-eyed Alethi soldier named Kaladin, nicknamed Kaladin Stormblessed, as we kind of watch his life spiral out of control. He longs to go off and be a part of an army, a real army, on the Shattered Plains to fight the Parshendi, but when he eventually gets to the Shattered Plains, it's not in a way that he would have liked it to have been. And we kind of see bits and pieces of his past that have led up to this moment in his life and that have kind of led him to be who he is and uh, to let us see why he does what he does and why he thinks the way he does. We follow a man named Dalinar, nicknamed the Blackthorn, one of the High Prince's brother to the Old King and uncle to King Elokar. Dalinar is one of, if not the most, uh, well thought of and respected high princes and he believes fully in this united kingdom that uh, his brother built. Dalinar is though to the dismay of the other high princes becoming a little bit odd in his old age. Dalinar has these visions during the high storms that he believes come from a god called the Almighty but that many believe are just delusions. Dalinar must struggle with this possibility while his son and successor Adolin, an accomplished duelist and sword fighter and known flirt, attempts to both uphold his father's honor and help to fight and defeat the Pershendi on the Shattered Plains. Dalinar's other son, Renarin, on the other hand, uh, is very much not into fighting and has a bit of a problem with it. He's very distant at times and lacks emotion. Dalinar is kind of like King Elokar's right-hand man and uh, many of the High Princes take advantage of Dalinar now that he is having these visions during the High Storms. So there's a lot of conflict going on within the war camps of the Shattered Plains, while at the same time they are trying to fight the Parshendi. And then we follow this sort of quick-witted, sarcastic, light-eyed girl named Shallon from Alethkar's bordering country, Jacques as she goes off in search of a woman named Jasna, who just happens to be the king's sister and Dalinar's niece, and she is one of the most accomplished scholars in all of Roshar. Shallon is a part of this sort of kind of weird screwed up family that hopes to make a name for itself more than it already has. Her father has recently died and her brothers has sent her off in search of Jasna with the mysterious past that she has and with these motives that her brothers have and that she has, she goes in search of Jasna to study under her. Above these many stories is another though, one that is as old as Roshar itself. Surrounding both legend and a religion called Voronism, there's this ancient group of ten godlike figures called the Heralds, given power by the Almighty, the god of Voronism, whom thousands of years ago founded a group called the Knights Radiant. The Knights Radiant were said to have abandoned humanity in its time of need during this time called the Desolations and when there was this evil force called the Voidbringers, and in doing so left behind these unique, mysterious, powerful weapons and armor called shard blade and shard plate. Each set of shard plate and each shard blade is extremely unique and those that have them now are called shard bearers. Shard plate fits itself perfectly to the wearer, is powered by stormlight, and is basically indestructible by anything except for a shard blade. Shard blades must bond to their owners, can disappear and reappear at the will of the owner, can cut through basically anything including stone and metal though doesn't really cut through limbs of people. When someone is cut with a shard blade, the body part that is cut goes limp forever, it becomes unusable forever, numb forever. And if you are killed with a shard blade, your eyes burn out of your sockets. And that is usually how you can tell when someone is killed by a shard blade and it leaves no blood. Along with the shard plate and shard blade, there is this magic system called Surge Binding, which is of the Knight's Radiant as well. I can't really go into it because you kind of have to pick it up as you go along within the story, but like everything, I will say that it is powered by Stormlight. You take it in and use it, depending on each individual ability that the person has, to control these ten specific forces of nature. Adhesion, gravitation, division, abrasion, progression, illumination, transportation, cohesion, and tension. Like I said, I can't really go that much into the max system. You kind of just have to go in and pick it up. Just know that it is really, really interesting. It has this huge realm of possibilities, but also adheres, just like all of Brandon Sanderson's magic systems, it adheres to 
physics of this world. It has a very specific set of laws that apply to each power and to each of the abilities and it's just extremely interesting to read about. And then above all of that is the presence of something that just seems so much greater than even Roshar. Something happening that this world is just a small fraction of. Something we are only just now beginning to comprehend. The Stormlight Archive series, with this book at its roots, is the flagship in a much grander story that Brandon Sanderson is building within the Cosmere. This is a story of war and finding oneself, friendship, responsibility, loyalty, leadership, honor, politics, religion, history, discrimination, power, betrayal, many pieces of a story with many, many different characters and lives and beliefs, creating this story that's still just a part, a single tiny piece of something even bigger. I am in complete awe of Brandon Sanders, and this is really just an amazing story, just amazing storytelling. Not only is every character unique and interesting, not only is the plot extremely intriguing, fast-paced and epic, but the world building is so unbelievable. You'll feel more engrossed into Roshar than you could likely feel possible. Let's talk about the characters real quick. There are many that I haven't even remotely touched on. Just there's there's so, so many. The three really big characters of this book, Kaladin, Dalinar, and Shallan, are given such detail that you really feel like you know them, and you just feel like you know them more and more as the story goes on. Each of these Stormlight Archive books is going to focus on one specific character more than the others. This one focuses on Kaladin the most, and then Words of Radiance, the next book, focuses on Shallan. And the third book focuses on a character that I haven't even been able to talk about yet. We get a look into the full lives and the full personalities of each one of these characters, based on their thoughts and their actions and past, what they can do, and what they are capable of doing, what they hope to do. Kaladin, in particular, is one of my new favorite characters of all time. He's just so honorable, he's really admirable, he's just a really interesting character. And like I said, he's one of my new favorite characters, and not just because he has long hair and dark brown eyes like I do. And then there's just all the people that Kaladin comes into contact with. I can't even tell you about them all, because I don't want to spoil anything. They just each have such a distinct personality, and a distinct voice with reasons for being the way that they are. There are the other Alethi High Princes that Dalinar has to deal with. There are ship workers, and scholars, and slaves, and slave workers, and royalty, and religious people, and just so many different kinds of people from many different Roshar countries with their own histories, politics, belief systems, ways of doing things, and each person in the story has a specifically different place within society as a whole. Then there's the plot, which is always moving forward, always fast-paced, always just going from event to event to event, sometimes given to us through flashbacks of Kaladin's life, sometimes given us from the perspective of many, many different other characters, all pieced together to form the overall various things going on within this world. Brandon Sanderson somehow manages to bring us into the thoughts, the minds, and the lives of these individual characters, only to pull out, to zoom out, to see the grander scale in things as a whole, give us the goings-on of an entire army in battle, allowing us to see from that zoomed-out perspective of things. There's war and inner struggles and individual growth and political intrigue, and just there's so much that pieces together everything that's happening in the story. That is piecing together how this world works, and that brings us to the world building. I've already given you a taste of some of the things you find within this world, but there's still so much more to know about Roshar. Each race of people, each walk of life, each different country, each belief system is given an attention that builds this world in our heads. This world is so perfectly realized that it feels like Brandon Sanderson is telling us the story of something that already exists, something that did exist or is, ex is existing now and he's just giving it to us, just telling us what is happening, like it's, it feels so real. You kind of have to pick things up as you go along, but it's just so well realized that it's vivid in your imagining of it and every little detail makes the world unique and it's all woven into the plot and into the characters' lives and thoughts and discoveries. It all blends together seamlessly, it all fits perfectly. And then there's the magic system, which once again I'm not going to go into, but your knowledge of it builds as you go along. And there are still many things to learn about it that I don't even know yet, even after having already read Words of Radiance. But this is good, this is intentional. We must learn about the many different possibilities as they are presented to us. Just know that it works so well. It's incredibly interesting and almost limitless in its possibilities for what it can do for the story. I mean, it's definitely limited on an individual basis, but it's just this grand thing that's kind of infused into the world, into its history, into its religions, 
and legends and into its many mysteries. There's just so much to learn that it's amazing. I'm worried that this will all make it sound even more intimidating, but it's really not. Brandon Sanderson's writing style is just really accessible while still being unique. He can be both deathly serious and heartbreaking and also extremely funny and clever. I was laughing a lot during some of the parts. But above all, he is very clever in his writing and it's just very unique and he is able to seamlessly bring together many different things, which then seamlessly fits into every element of an even greater story that this is a piece of. And he does this like it's nothing. What he does with his writing is just natural. It feels natural. The way he thinks about everything and gives us different perspectives from every angle just makes it so smooth. It just makes everything fit really well. It's both grand and personal, big and small, fast-paced and full of substance. There are also these uh, really great drawings throughout the book that really uh, kind of help your understanding of things as you go along, or help your like uh, visualization of things. And then the book is split up into five parts, each part following a specific few characters, and then there are interludes between each part. I really like the interludes a lot. They kind of feel like they're like these little short stories that maybe they may feel like they're kind of separate from everything else that's going on in the main story. It really gives us an insight into what the rest of the world is up to. Insight into something we may not have seen in the main story that we need to know about. Sometimes a character will only have one interlude and then we'll never see them again. But we tend to get a piece of important information within each interlude before we move on to the next part. And each part begins and ends exactly when it should. It really the pacing is really well controlled. It feels natural and keeps the pacing in check. Anyway, that's everything I'm going to say about this. I loved it. I loved it so much. I've already read the second one, Words of Radiance. I love that even more, honestly. I'm going to try to do a review of that one as well. Hopefully this review went better than the first time I tried to record it. So hopefully this video won't be too long at the end. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know if you've read this, if you want to read it. I really think everyone should read it. I think a lot of people would find stuff that they like in the story. And I genuinely feel like there are many people that would love this story a lot. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you very soon with more.